Okay, it's working. Welcome, everybody. So just a quick kind of throwing it out there. I don't know how to place everything. I'm just going to throw a few ideas. I've got other things to do tonight. So a box came in and we were a little surprised because we got a notification two days ago. And then it's like, oh, is this Mr. Charles? So I'll just kind of, I think, I think you've kind of already seen all of this. I want to show something else. I want to talk about something else. So you've seen, you've seen, you've seen the content, right? What is this deck? This is the blue, the water deck. So I think I could talk about sleeves because I, um, guess some people would like to see what I have in mind for sleeves. If you want the book, the rules, you can scan that, I guess. We've got, we've received a pack. This, I started tearing it and then I stopped. I opened it from the back and I'm flattening out. Kind of stuff you'll never see again in your life. Especially this guy, Alpha. The box is over there. I'm never going to see this again in my life, except if I have it. So in the pledge, we've got tokens and some cards, I think. Rubbles were in the box. I got to show you. Got Eric signed, some rubble, a guile, and Frank Frazetta. I didn't quite remember what was coming. That's door foil. I'll I'll give my camera a test of the foil just so that everybody can attempt to appreciate. That's a double sleeve. So let, let's get into the business. So I opened this box. Let me show you this shit. It still has its wrap. Right? I opened the box with a cutter. I'm going to say what I said in the Discord. I used this tool, Fresh Blade, to cut just where it opens in an attempt to save the wrap. And sometimes it works out like a little box like this. You can cut around where it opens and the box will retain its wrap. No effort. It's effortless. And this wrap is going to stay on this box for two years, three or so, you guys see that? There's a wrap here, right? It'll stay on the box for two, three years until it wears out, then it's gonna fall. But then the box itself would, will remain crisp and uh, because it hasn't been exposed to not only sun, but uh, dust, uh, grease. I think uh, finger grease is the biggest enemy. And uh, we don't think about that. Ooh, looks clean. I always wash my hands before I handle stuff but the wrapping on this is effortlessly falling so it's kind of impossible yeah and the box looks fantastic it looks great but the grease is going to do a lot of work on this it's uh paper cardboard i'd really really like to keep this over it and it looks very particular it feels very alpha uh very um like, uh, we're taking really good care of it. So I've got to find a way, and I need your help, Chet, to keep this on without necessarily gluing anything to the box, without modifying the box or what we call destroying the box, or uh, what is it called? Damaging the box? So is there any way, and I think there might be, the only thing that comes to mind, and if you have any idea, if you've ever done this, let me know. What comes to mind is a rubber band from here to there. And here possibly also. That way it would at least hold this from just moving. Um, and for the bottom, 
maybe a rubber band across the bottom that would go around here. And we don't need to put too much pressure on the, the, the flap as it closes here. That seems to make sense to me. I'd really, really like to find a solution. And if you would also, I recommend that you um, probably remove this as you transport the box so that you don't damage the plastic itself. But there's no other way to open the box um, unless you cut here and here to open it. I guess some people could cut here to open it like a flap, but it would never close completely, which is an idea. So let's put this aside for now, food for thought. Same with the decks. So the decks open here, here. We got a little flappy here. We can close this. And it's very well preserved in my opinion. As best I, as it may be. I think the best way to open it, by the way, if you don't want to break these, because the fire one is about to give and rip. It's really to um, absolutely use your, your, your finger. I thought about putting something under and f flipping it open. Put, put the finger in, put some pressure. It's going to dent. Did you see that? It's going to dent this part here, but at least it's going to open very more uh, smoothly than the fire deck is opening currently. Okay, let's talk sleeves. So sleeves, I use the Dragon Shield inner sleeves, which is this. Perfect fit. Dragon Shield inner sleeves. Um, let's find one that was difficult yesterday. I think the fire deck. So there was some cards that were bending because they were too tight. And I want to see if my solution uh, helped form the plastic. Let's loosen them up. Let's loosen them up. You guys are loose. You're good. Bet you agree. Everything's loose, huh? Prove me wrong. And, you know, they're a little, some of them are a little not so sure if they're going to be all right. But it's much better than yesterday. Yesterday, the card was literally like uh, this in the plastic. But by putting pressure, it fit correctly. And, and in the past, my cards have bent with Dragon Shield. Okay. Um, in the plastic, you just put pressure on them. They seem to flatten out. And I've put them in the decks that I've played, and I've never seen a card that would, like, come back from the, like, un, like bend again. You know what I mean? Bend again and kind of have a trouble setting. It seems, it looks like the plastic is setting around the card, so I like that. I think I prefer that than having any pocket of air. But like some guy said in the Discord, just move on to the next sleeve It's if it's too close, too too tight that's a defect uh, and move on and some of them are just way too tight just move on you'll get a feel for it kind of dark a little bit isn't she find her a little dark you see that so be it do i have a special one i don't think so i don't think there's curios in the standard decks Lands look fantastic. So we're looking at a single sleeve. Very rich color, very vivid colors. Okay. Detail. 16 times the detail. Okay. With just using a single sleeve. And I do prefer a single sleeve over anything. The issue is that it's open. You see any of that? It's open to the environment. And at some point, I figured out that the environment is air, and we breathe the air. If it wasn't air, we wouldn't breathe anything. And there are things in the air, and some things we see and some things we don't see. Some things microscopic, 
others that we see. So specks of dust, for example. And humans, I believe, produce mm, dust, a lot of dust. Um, so does Kleenex boxes, uh, pets. Um, but I think beyond that, uh, at least it's going to protect from grease. Uh, and you'll notice grease as soon as you put it in. Just look at your sleeve under the light. You'll see a grease mark. Go wash your hands and keep working. So, so I don't like this opening at all. I want this to be shut. Completely shut. So we have the... Where are you? We have the Dragon Shield clear mat which is the one i find locally it looks like a eugen if you know your magic lure clear mat why mat they are clear at the surface that's very clear at the surface but mat at the back right you can tell the difference right between the two And so, what's great about not being a, a, as a slippery a surface uh, in the back is a little rough. It's got a texture to it. Can you hear it? Let me show you. Okay, that's the front here. The thing, that's the back. Okay. So, the, what's great about the, the back texture is that it shuffles really well. You won't get that sticky, okay? So that's a uh, sticky on a mat, and you get a good shuffle feel. If you put sticky on sticky, it can get stuck a little bit. Now I'm kind of exaggerating it, but I am considering. I am considering. Um, clear on both sides. And the reason I'm considering it is because we uh, play a 36 deck, uh, card deck and a 16 card uh, deck for the sites. So 36 is going to be a lot less than 60 cards uh, shuffling uh, and sticking. Like the easier if they stick. Uh, much less worse than 60 cards. Or a hundred cards and try to shuffle something that doesn't have a texture that simplifies the shuffle. So I hope that's clear. Um, do I need to say that again? You can get sleeves that are clear on both sides, but the shuffle is harder because it sticks between the clear, whereas the mat will not have that problem. It's an easier shuffle feel. So, you know, if you like to. Uh, you prefer the, the shuffle but at 36 cards i'm very interested in uh, having clear sleeves double sleeve and trying that out at least i'll buy one pack and that way having the inner take a rosetta heart here the inner is at the bottom put that in your sleeve at the bottom and um, you don't need to for it to hit the bottom either. I should have gave my credentials at first. So, because it's going to position itself anyways with the shuffle. But at least it's shut. My credentials for sleeves is that five years ago or so, I decided to hunt the perfect combination of inner sleeves and outer sleeves. And I ordered from all the uh, the sleeves makers. Um, the names are escaping me, but you know we had Eclipse sleeve. Now there's Katana, which I hear is good. Um, these are Dragon Shield, which have always been uh, good, a little thick compared to others uh, or possibly others. But I like I like them now. We'll come back to that. And what else have we tried? So Eclipse. Dragon Shield. There was another one, wasn't there? Um, I even tried some.
from Australia, which I still have. I can show you. Might as well. That's what you're here for. Um. Here are just some sleeves I've never used because uh, they didn't, didn't quite work out. So a 65 here compared to a 66 or 60. Uh, we have some over sleeve 69. What is, it, what is this? Ultra Pro upper deck. I don't know. So 69 is going to be an over sleeve for triple sleeving. Um, unless you're not exactly standard size. So 69 is not what you were looking for, but if you're triple sleeving, at least I've got those and I'll I'll try it on camera. Let's do that. And sleeve swan was, was like Australian, I think. Uh, Ultra Pro was good. I do prefer a thinner inner sleeve, especially the more cards you have, like imagine a hundred. Can you see the difference chat between this, this is going to be Ultra Pro, and this, Perfect Fit by the way, the old Perfect Fits are thinner, the new Perfect Fit, which says this here, are a little bit thicker, but they're still thinner than most outer sleeves, but I do prefer the, uh, the, the old ones. Do you see the difference between the two flops? Same speed. Let me try. Oh, that's confusing. Uh, are you serious right now, Charles? So all I can say, uh, you, you might see it a little more if I do this. This one is definitely more floppy. You can't really tell from there, but like this one here clearly goes like under. So this one is thinner, that's my point. And I do prefer thinner inner sleeves as they compact the deck more. They feel better in your hand. You can shuffle better. So for a 60 card or a 100 card, um, I would consider Ultra Pro Pro Fit if they still have those. I don't know. Uh, and I am going to reconsider them uh, myself for my 100 cards deck. So... And let's just show maybe a, a technique. Do I have any? Let's use the guile. Let, let's use a rubble. How about that? Come out. So let's show the technique, okay? So because some people don't like to inner sleeve, they find it challenging, or they don't like it, or it bends their card. They're you know whatever. They, they, there's something, and they don't like it. So first you just make sure you split them with your two fingers, split them, slide them in, and then you'll find some resistance possibly at some point, maybe here, right? So here we find resistance. So what you want to do is just hold your sleeve tight. Doesn't matter how much pressure you put on the card on both sides. It's equal physically speaking. And then what you want to do is use the top border here to push that card in. But see, if you push too much, that's what happens. You don't want that. That's dangerous. You just you want to just add that pressure slowly. But it's a personal thing. If you find yourself doing this, stop. Take a deep breath. Okay? And maybe you want to use two fingers like that. And at some point, you're going to be really good at loving cards enough to put them in okay and and it you you know you're putting pressure you might find them bend a little bit or like you're you're doing things but they should pass the bend test right i would hope so and i'm okay with that you know as far as i know we should probably test them um, at some point, I'll destroy one of them. I just don't know which yet. Um, so unconfirmed for the bent test. Now, the perfect solution would be two inner sleeves that fit one into another, um, which is possible. 
but it really makes a shuffle feel even worse than previously mentioned. But with 36, we might go on a quest again to find two inner sleeves that can be put into one another. Because the thinner the plastic, the less, um, what is it called? Dissolution of light or distribution of light or, or refraction or what is it exactly? Look, if you put three sleeves around this, you can start to see that we're losing detail. We're losing detail a little bit. Let's put an over sleeve, just try it out. And you know what? I've got three rubbles. Let's uh let's party. So let's do one rubble inner sleeve only. One rubble inner and uh regular, and then one rubble. We have this one maybe already open. One of them will be triple sleeve. And it's not necessarily a fair test because we haven't given it enough time to settle correctly, properly. You know, triple sleeve, I guess, would settle within, what, a month or so? Here, that store. So let me show you maybe with that store. I'll do the best I can. It's embossed, by the way. Here it's embossed, and so are the stars. Let me try to... I mean, I'm trying to show you that the more sleeve, the more plastic, the thicker the plastic, the more detail you lose. And so the dream is two inner sleeves that are thin. You keep plastic, you keep uh, detail, and you... Uh, seal the bottom that's door trouble and triple so the triple here can go over and do all over again wish to that is cool the first ever triple sleeve Sorcery, TCG, tutorial, to remove the air, I'm pressing, I'm pressing here, pressing and doing a, a motion like this, kind of a rotation motion, you can do it with more cards, professional triple sleever, you can do it, putting that pressure again like that, kind of Forcing the air. Not too much pressure, that's not the goal. The motion is 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 comes first. And let's see the result here. So we have an a single inner sleeve. That is hot, dude. Here we have a double sleeve uh what is it called? Dragon Shield clear mat very well protected i feel completely confident throwing this in the water no problem and then a triple sleeve um sorcery tcg ride on it with your car i don't care it's gonna be fine it's actually very stiff as well and uh you can't scratch that uh, dropping the knife would would definitely probably go through. Let's do the back side. Yeah, good idea. What does it look like on the table? Right. Look at this. So crisp. Stunning. Can't do much for the focus, guys. For now. Double sleeve. <clears throat> Double sleeve, but with the matte back, right? And triple sleeve with the matte back. Um, definitely fine for alpha stuff that would be worth like a thousand bucks or whatever. 
definitely be interested in triple sleeve anything. Uh, it's a fine solution for any game, you know, really. Uh, this is a standard size, by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube. We're looking at standard size <clears throat> 66 um, width, millimeter width card, card game. Looks a little off. Maybe I... So, there's like a lot of space here. Maybe if I um, change or opposite the uh, way that I sleeve them. <clears throat> so instead of going uh, bottom first, you could go like top first, then bottom, then top. And it, this space here could possibly be on top instead. Uh, so give it a shot. What's up, huge? <laughs> What's good, man? No, I know people that I've never heard. I, I go to my TCG. I received it yesterday. I go to the TCG and I, I ask people, like, anybody heard of sorcery? You know? And they're like, no, no, what is it? I would have thought that more people would have heard by now. Uh, but if you've never heard, um, this is a fine place to kind of showcase. So let me just clean up a bit. And I'll just show you what I have if, if people are really here. Be my pleasure. This won't be too long. Voilà. Poubelle. Ultra Pro, that, that's definitely an Ultra Pro. Yeah, I might just go on a quest again for a, a perfect double, double sleeve, inner sleeve combo. Two slim inner sleeve that go into one another. That was the dream. I remember now. That was the quest. Swan are not used. <sighs> Okay. Moving this. So let's look at the card. So this was a Kickstarter, and you know the guy just put everything together. What did he put together? Well, take a look at this. Wow. Can you see anything? Crabs, polar bears, Nayads, Gael Serin, a buffalo. Jeez, where am I? Mar Mega Amoeba? What is this? Biology? Frogs? The fuck? Mermaids? I never noticed that there was so many animals in the water deck. Pretty sick, isn't it? Let's see. Gonna pull you guys up here. Sorry for the... I didn't notice I was busy. Um... Right up your alley. Yeah, I think, you know, people play Magic, people play Fab. And I think the same people who like both might or should be liking this also. The The guy commissioned art, uh, Eric Olufsen. He is the art... Oh, I'm going to get this wrong. Artistic uh, lead or was the artistic lead or uh, designer, artistic art designer for Pat to Exile, was it Pat to, Pat of Exile? The game Pat to Exile. It's a game you've heard of before, but I've, I've never played it myself. Mother Nature. Swan Maiden. And the, it, there's a very 90s feel to it. And there's a reason for that. 
he went straight to the people who made 90s, who made art, fantasy art, in the 90s. He went straight to them. Vincent Pompetti. I bet if you look up like magic cards for Vincent Pompetti, you might just find something. And the first thing that's striking is that they have no border. Bullfrog is badass, bro. I'm gonna try and make my camera uh, zoom or autofocus. Give me a try here. I don't want to be too long. Uh, autofocus. Let's try that. Fuck yes. Fuck yes, dude. By the way, before my video is over, there's tits all over the place here. But can we get ass? Is there ass? Please get some Frank Frazetta with ass. Man, these guys make such great art with ass. Please, Eric. I would buckle. Let's try pirate ship again. Look at this majesty. And you'll notice there is no rarity symbols. By the way, Twitch, this stream is not sponsored. I bought this. Very willingly. There's no rarity symbols. The rarity is in this, this word here. An ordinary ship of mortal scum. Is it? Ordinary is the rarity. Ordinary is a very common card. Exceptional magic. God, they're majestic. Or the, what does it say? Shrewd Seafarer. I'm learning English with this card, which I appreciate a lot. Exceptional is uh, an uncommon. Exceptional. Again, Vincent Pompetti. Some of them are, are have an incredible style. I'm very, very pleased. whatever and see another ordinary here drawn by Alan Polak Francesca Barald with the Frost Nova now that's the name that Eric gave the cards I, I assume not uh is there are changes. Ice Lance. Brian Smith. I could do this all day. And these folks, they worked on D&D in the 90s. They worked on magic in the 90s. They worked on all kinds of fantasy stuff. Book covers. They were the or part of the great and of course some of them are younger so you know they but they've always wor worked on this and if you look at something like flood i wouldn't be surprised if this was a crayon and not the most recent technology that a lot of artists may um use or prefer or some people don't prefer to use the, the newer technology for drawing and which they do great things with but you know coming back to this uh, as a project, I find very, uh, uh, I don't know, just, just proper, proper, Matthias Frisk, Jeff Menges, Duncan Treasures. It's like I'm back in the, in the nineties, in the book in the nineties, it's striking. There's 400 cards. In the set. 400 cards. Four hundred pieces of art. And it's the first set. Eric put 
our estimation is about half a million dollar into this. I wouldn't be surprised if it would be close to 300. Um, I wouldn't doubt if it would be more. The lands are sideways. Landscapes. Come on. Okay. And what you do is you, you play on a grid of the 20 squares, 5 by 4, and you start by putting your lands or your um, atlas, uh, sites, I think they're called, so sites. Um, the back is different too. This is the atlas. Please focus. This is so hot. Um, you don't tap them to generate mana. They just generate mana. And in order to play your spells, for example, this guy here has a cost of five. How close can I be? Five and two blue, which means it costs five mana, and you must have two water threshold. So if you look carefully on your land, land will produce a mana, well, if you have four lands or five lands, and you, some of them will have a threshold, like this. This land will give you one water threshold, meaning that some lands don't produce or have a threshold. Let's see if I can find any. Water has uh, all the threshold, it looks like. But some lands don't, don't have a threshold. They may have another ability, but not a threshold. Um, so the lands are quite simple. You just make sure that you have enough of those threshold on your battlefield, and how many lands you count. You are five, you can play this. And then this... This is a monster, so it's going to have a four power. And it, there's no power and defense. It's both power and defense. So it hits for four and will die if it gets hit by four. And there's a lot of different abilities. And here's Elite, by the way. Elite is two per deck. And have we seen a unique? Not necessarily. I believe there's one. And the thing about the rarity... Ordinary, you can have four of them in the deck. Exceptional, you can have... They're uncommon, so you can have three of them in the deck. Elite are like rares, you can have two of them in the deck. And uniques are like mythics, you can have one of them in your deck. And that sets all kinds of... boundaries around power, around acquisition of cards, around... what can be busted, etc. It, it's so defining, um, it's hard for me to grasp really how far-reaching this simple organization is for a deck. Because think about it, uh, in Magic we have a Lion's Eye Diamond, for example. You can have four of them if you play a Legacy, and that thing is 500, I think. So... You have to pay, you know, get there. Whereas if it's unique, you can only have one. So that it kind of fixes a lot of things and it affects the market a lot. But then Commander, we play one of each. The market is clearly run by Commander, so. Um, so the lands, let's come back. So Ordinary, we can have four of those. And there are three, because it's a pre-con. Uh, Summer River. So what's the difference between Spring River and Summer River? Hello? So Spring River says Genesis. Genesis is when it enters the battlefield. Look at your next spell on the spell book. You may put it on the bottom of your spell book. So it's like a scry. And then the Summer River says, look at your next spell, you may put it at the, at the bottom of your spellbook. So same thing. So blue is going to work with the library. Same thing with Autumn River, which I should display, 
showcase. So vivid. That's what I need to retain. Under toe. Uh. The undertow. An exceptional sight of strong undercurrent. Gives you one water threshold. Genesis. Staying within this body of water. Move target unit one step. What? Because Genesis is what when it enters the battlefield. Or the world map or whatever staying within this body of water move target unit one step so if a unit would rest here like that you could at some point move it one step i guess and it's an, an exceptional uh, we can have three but there's two floodplain i just want to display the cards man just trying to show Mike what's up. This Mike, this is, this is what we want to see. Yeah. An exceptional sight of intermittent inundation. Blood plain with one water threshold. And by the way, some of them give you a water and a fire. Or a water and a earth. You know, they're like dual threshold. In int, once on your turn... You may flood an adjacent site this turn. So adjacent will be a cardinal direction. So front, back, sides. And nearby will be surrounding. So nearby is surrounding and cardinal or adjacent is on the side. Simple words that make the, the rules on the cards uh, small. and uh, displays as best as possible, or as most as possible, uh, the art. Please, you've seen it. The tadpole. Come on. A unique site and nursery for nu nuisance. Uh, gives you a threshold, and when it, a land enters the battlefield, guys, you get a your mana then also. You get it early, and then you, you get it there. If you have three threshold, and on Genesis, summon three submerged frog tokens here. And these tokens are here. Let me show you. As you put this on the world map... You have your three frogs, which are uh, one fourth of the size. And so you just, they tried half size, but they were too big. They would cover too much. So you have your three frogs here. Bonk. Right? Just the right size. Boom. Um, anyway, so I hope that was uh, interesting to look at. Frogs, we only get one of each like that. I'm lucky, I think I got two packs, but definitely want to find a little sleeve for this. This is going to be a, a half of a, of a, this, a half of the card, so half of 66 per 89 is 32 by uh, 44 or something. So you want to find something 32 by 44 for those. I've made one myself with a sleeve, cutting it and keeping a corner, and then wrapping around to the side. So this is the bottom of a card, like that. I've cut it here and wrapped. Maybe cut part of it and then wrapped. Don't have the right scotch tape. So it's not great, great. Um, what else to touch on? Let's go fire. Let's do a little bit of fire. Red desert. An ordinary sight of blight. Genesis deals one damage. Deal one damage to each minion atop target nearby sight. So nearby is surrounding. You can go like this, target. One. 
Pirate Desert, one. Shifting Sand. For me, it's the art. For me, it's the art. Come on. Ah. Right there, yeah. Oh my goodness. Exceptional sight of uh, unsettled uh, animosity. Genesis. Trigger the Genesis ability of each allied desert nearby. Like these. Cool. By the way, this is uh, Wasili Ermalev. You should look up his art if you like it. It's all like that. It's like a girth. It's an, a girl. Girlfriend of mine that told me that. I don't know anything about artists. I'm learning fucking. An elite site where key line converge, standing stones. Minion here are spellcasters. Because you see the spells. Some of them are spells. This here is a spell. And you, you know it's a spell because it says spell. What is this, Jeff, Jeff Easley? You're back in the 90s when you look at this. Ordinary magic unleashes a blazing barrage. Shoot three projectiles in the same direction, one at a time, each deal one. You can't just shoot it from anywhere. You gotta shoot it from a spellcaster. And that could be your avatar, which are the, the faces that we saw. The, the, the ladies, like this lady or um or it could be a creature that has the ability spellcaster which there's one here a salamander brother 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 the red deck is so hot the earth deck is the most played but the red deck dude are you kidding I was waiting to hold this card in my hand, man. Vincent Pompetti. <sighs> um, I thought that I ha I thought I had a salamander. Where's my salamander spellcaster? Why are they upside down? Oop, oop, oop. Dragons. Dragons. Who's this? Lindsay Crummet. Hmm? Where's my salamander? Well, maybe I don't have the salamander. Salamander is a spellcaster. All right, just a little more and I'm leaving. Vesuvius. A unique sight of doom foretold by who? Juicy? Is it Juicy Polkas? Three red. Not on Genesis though, but three red. Sacrifice Vesuvius. Each unit occupying nearby sites, all right? Nearby, around. Sites takes three damage. And units are either your avatar, your minions, or constructs or something like that. Automatons, I believe. One more. What the fuck? Fire Spellcaster. So this land is a Spellcaster. You can cast the spell that we saw earlier from that point. Right? So either your avatars are moving around, wherever she is. So because it's on the battlefield, you get to move it around. You know? And then she can be a point where you cast a spell. Or the Fire Salamander, if we can find it. Or this guy. It's a land. So imagine it's your turn, and you're... you're, you're opponent as like a row of of creatures or fucking i don't know what you put your second land or next to them and then you say from that point you make a bolt or something they've never seen it coming cool so 
super cool. So that's the inner sleeve saga. Um, I think we're gonna go on a odys odyssey of finding uh, two inner sleeves that fit into one another. But for now, know that there are solutions. <clears throat> After trying all the sleeves out there that I could put my hands on, I came back to Eclipse or Katana uh, back in the day. Now I'm with Dragon Shield, that's what I have around. Um, I want something clear. Uh, that, but yeah, I'll just stop there. Uh, this goes here. Just gonna look another time for the salamander. Sure, sure chat. Dragons. Baby dragons. Big dragons. Fireball. Fireballs. Sandworm. Heat ray. Did you see? Jeff Easley. Doug Kovac. Vincent Pompetti. Vasilyar Molev, again, the one I said earlier. Major explosion, you literally deal damage on the grid like the like it says. It's it's really cool effects. I don't know how they can outdo everything they have here, but I'll let them consider. Infernal Legion. Hell yeah. Sick. Hopefully the camera can do a good job at this. Nobody can capture it the way that we all see it when we receive it. That thing seems to capture it correctly. But the level of detail in the specs of this card is insane. Doing my best here. We're pushing the camera to its limits. Once you get it in your hand, chat, you're like, how did you even manage to put that many specs on a painting? It, it looks like I stubbed on the painting, dude. It's, it's a pit. It blows, dude. It, it's amazing. Gotta see it up close. And of course, we get foils when we open the box. I haven't opened it yet. Scarabs. Melissa Benson. That's, that's the name I was looking for. So she made a salamander also. It just fits the team so well. I like her. Camel. Beautiful. Angels with titties. But seriously, if you look up the artist, uh, maybe especially Frazetta, uh, he, 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 he drew incredible backsides. See it? It's majestic. Exceptional monster of ardent desire. Airborne is flying. Genesis... Teleport target weaker minion to this location. Um, clamor of RPs may strike it. Cool. So she brings stuff to them and, and destroys. Burrowing means you can go under under the the land or the, the site to be kind of covered from spells and shit happening. And lethal, of course, as you understand, it's one shot, one one kill. So it's just a one one for one. This is uh, Alan Polak. So how many cards have we seen in red? 30, 40, 50? No, not 50. 35, maybe? Right? And like I said, there's 400 cards in the, in the set. So that means 100 per color. We've seen 35 out of 100 gives you an idea of just how massive this undertake is so yeah 
Hopefully you uh, like what you see. I did that first sight. And uh, let's see how close we can get. Have a good day, chat. Uh, I'll be playing this at some point with some friends, with something. We'll see.